Hi right, guys, welcome to this page of the notes. And again, what we're doing is we're graphing transformations for exponential growth functions. I know that they're going to be a growth function because I take a look at this and I see that my base is a two. That's a number bigger than one. And so I know that it's going to be an exponential growth, but we are dealing with transformations here because I have values for a H and K. So let's go ahead and jump right into this example problem and see what we wind up with. I know that my general form is Y equals a times b raised to the x plus or minus h plus or minus k. Well, what that tells me then is I do have some transformations here. My a uh, is the number in front of the base, which I don't have one. Well, there isn't one written there, which means that a is equal to 1. So I don't have a reflection across the x-axis. It is going to open up above the x-axis, and it doesn't have a vertical stretch or compression. Fantastic. But I do have a number up in the exponent position with the x. It turns out to be a positive 3. So that tells me that h is equal to a positive 3. And I know h is going to do the opposite. Since I have a positive 3, my graph is going to be shifted 3 units in the negative direction or to the left. And then, of course, my k. I have a k as well. It's going to be the number tacked on the end. And it's a minus 5. And what that tells me is that my graph is going to be shifted down 5 units. So a couple interesting things here. Before I even set up my chart, here's what I know. I know that my horizontal asymptote, which is generally the x-axis if there are no transformations, has now been shifted down 5 units. So my new horizontal asymptote is going to be y equals negative 5. Right there. So I'll put a little dotted line right there. I know that that's going to be my new horizontal asymptote. It's going to be the horizontal line that my graph will approach but never touch. I also know that my graph has been shifted three units to the left since h was a positive three. Here's what that means. Without transformations, your graph will always go through the point zero, 0,1. But my graph has been shifted down 5 units and back to the left 3 units. So this point, which is 0, 1, is going to be down 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, to negative 4, and left 3, 1, 2, 3, negative 3. What I'm going to expect is in my chart, I'm going to get a point, negative 3, negative 4. Let's see if that point winds up. I'll just write it down here just as a, a reference. If it does show up, it'll be a little aha moment. But based on my transformations, I'm predicting that my graph is going to go through the point minus 3, minus 4, since that point 0, 1 would be shifted down 5, thanks to k, and left 3, thanks to the h. Well, let's find out. Okay, uh, I'm going to go ahead and start with, um, let's start with a minus 5. So we'll do negative 5, negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, and 1. That's more than enough points. Let's see what happens. I plug a negative 5 in for x. Negative 5 plus 3 is going to be a negative 2. 2 to the negative second, and then subtract 5, you wind up with negative 4.75. Do the exact same thing for negative 4. Plug in a negative 4, plus 3 would be a minus 1. 2 to the negative first, and then subtract 5. You wind up with negative 4.5. Plug in a negative 3. Negative 3 plus 3 is 0. 2 to the 0 power is 1. And 1 plus a minus 5 is a negative 4. Cuckoo, cachoo. Look at that. Negative 3, negative 4, and I predicted I would get negative 3, negative 4. This transformation stuff is awesome. Let's plug in a negative 2. Plug in a negative 2, I wind up with a minus 3. Plug in a negative 1, I get a minus 1, 0, 3, and 1, 11. That point's not really going to fit, but we might be able to fudge it a little bit. Let's go ahead and graph these guys and see what happens. 0. 0, 3, uh, 1, 11. That'll be just off my graph, somewhere right up about there. Let's do a couple more. Negative 1, negative 1, 2 minus 
negative 2 minus 3, negative 3, negative 4, there, and there. And yeah, that's pretty good. All right, make sure you extend your line all the way through the coordinate plane. Put arrows on both ends so I know you know that that graph just keeps going. And it looks pretty much exactly like we said it was going to look before we even started plotting any points. We knew it was going to open above my horizontal asymptote. I knew it had to go from left to right. And we even go right through the point I predicted that we were going to go through thanks to the transformations. All right, let's go ahead and do another one. I got one more for you right here. Let's see how this one turns out. Again, I know that my general equation is y equals a times b raised to the x plus or minus h plus or minus k. All right, let's go ahead and see what transformations we've got. Well, I've got a number in front of my base, so I know that my a is equal to 0 0.1. One. Now, because point 0.1 is a decimal, I know it's going to be a vertical compression, so my slope is going to be a little shallower. Right? My graph's not going to take off quite so steeply. Um, I don't have an h because there's nothing up in the exponent position with the x, so h is going to be a 0. But I do have a k tacked on the end back there. That k happens to be a minus 3, so I know that my horizontal asymptote is going to be shifted down 3. Let me go ahead and put that in there. It's going to be right there, be my new horizontal asymptote at y equals minus 3. And I know that my graph is going to open above this guy. All right, let's go ahead, set up our chart, get some points to plot, see what this looks like. Again, your calculator will do most of the work here. Just don't fat finger something on your calculator. Make sure that you do the order of operations correctly. Uh, and again, since I, um, uh, I don't have a shift uh, horizontally, I will go ahead and use the same numbers uh, that I had been using before. Although I think... I don't think I want to do that. Let's go ahead and start at um, let's go ahead and start at zero. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Um, again, the reason I'm going to do this, you certainly could start at negative three like you wanted to, um, and there's nothing wrong with that. No problem whatsoever. You'll get a number that you probably will be able to graph. It's just going to be a really small decimal. Um, we'll actually get numbers I feel more comfortable graphing when we get to zero. Anyway, we plug these into our function. Again, don't fat finger something on your calculator. When you plug in a zero, you should get negative 2.9. If you plug in x equals a positive 1, you should get negative 2.8. Plug in a positive 2, you should get negative 2.6. Plug in a 3, negative 2.2 negative 1.4. Again, these numbers are not increasing very quickly, right? See how they're all kind of real close together? Again, that's because of the value of A out front, right? What it's doing is it's keeping uh, how quickly my graph increases. It's keeping that slope real shallow. So I won't see big jumps until I get to much larger values of X, which is why I shifted my graph. Plug in a 5, I get 0 0.2. Plug in a 6, I get 3.4. There we go. Those are a little bit bigger jumps. 7 is going to be 9.8. Actually, that's about as big as it's going to fit. So we'll stop there. That's as big as I can fit on my graph. And let's go ahead and graph some of these guys. Uh, let's find the ones that are going to be a little bit easier to do here. 0, 2.9. That's going to be right down around there. Well, actually, hold up. Sorry, it'll be a little bit lower than that. 2.9 is practically sitting right on top of my line, as is that one. Uh, that one's a little bit further up. Three, a little bit further up still. Then we're at negative 1.4, up a little bit further still. 0.2, there we go. Um, so we're actually going to now be above the x-axis. 
So we get to 5, 5.2. Now we're above the x-axis. Uh, 3.4, that's essentially 4. Let's see, 1, 2, let's see, 1, 2, 3.4, maybe right about there. 9.8, go all the way almost up to the very top of that graph. Anyway, again, right, you're freehanding this. It doesn't have to be perfect. As long as you're somewhere in the vicinity, I'm good. I'm not going to freak out at you. Um, just do not draw your line below the horizontal asymptote. I'll be happy. Make sure you extend your line all the way through the coordinate plane. Put arrows on both ends so I know you know that that graph just keeps going. And it did essentially what we thought it was going to do. We knew the horizontal asymptote was shifted down three units, and we knew it was going to be a real shallow kind of curve um, since my A uh, was less than one and I have a vertical compression. Let's get the domain and range to finish this one off. Again, all real numbers, it'll be all real numbers every time. You can plug in any value of x that you want to. But now the range is going to be a little different. My horizontal asymptote has been shifted down three units. So I'm going to want all values of y that are greater than a minus three. Since my horizontal asymptote is at y equals negative three, that's the line that I'll approach but never touch. So all my range values are going to be greater than strictly greater than negative three. All right, guys, that takes care of graphing exponential growth functions um, that are both the parent function without transformations and with transformations. Hopefully that makes a lot of sense. Head on over to the next page of the notes and we'll start to look at some of the modeling we can do with these exponential growth functions. I'll meet you guys over there.